The information contained in this podcast is an expression of opinion and does not constitute investment advice. This is the Gold Money Foundation podcast with Alistair McLeod, keeping you up to date with expert opinion on precious metals and the markets. Hello, this is Alistair McLeod on behalf of the Gold Money Foundation. Today on the line from Toronto, I have David Quintieri, who recently published a book, The Money GPS, Guiding You Through an Uncertain Economy. The book provides an introduction to economics. It goes into the origins of money, the booms and busts of the past, and takes us right up to, to today's financial crisis. It goes into making money, concentrating on four different types of assets. Paper assets, such as bonds and other securities, commodities and precious metals, real estate, and David also gives some advice about going into business. David has a website, themoneygps.com, where you can get a shortened version of this book for free, or indeed you can buy the whole book. Welcome to you, David. All right, thank you for having me on. I appreciate this. Um, well, thank you for joining me. Um, can I first ask you, what prompted you to write the book, and who are your target audience? Well, uh I started by reading a bunch of uh, finance books, and I really got into the Austrian economics. And what that taught me was that the governments have put themselves into a corner. They brought the interest rates all the way down, and they seem to only have one source of um, one possible outcome, and that, and that is to print money, creating inflation. So essentially what I did was I, I took my notes that I was creating and I made a book out of it. And I hope that people will realize how fragile our system really is. So my target audience is really someone who isn't deep into the financial field. So it's, it's a beginner's book. And you get to learn what's going on behind the scenes. So those who want to know more deeply into what's going on, not necessarily what the newspapers are telling you. That's who it's good for. And it's also good for people who want to take more control over their finances. Um, t well, that's interesting. Is this, I mean, tell us a little bit about your background. Have you found uh, in your experience that people uh, want to take more control over their finances? Is this, um, uh, if you like, a professional view? Yeah, I, I definitely think that uh, People are getting concerned with uh, inflation picking up and their mutual funds and RSPs and, and uh, that sort of thing aren't really keeping up. And uh, I believe that they want to do they do want to take more control over their money. And something like this book gets the beginner some knowledge and then he can take that and go on from there. You don't have to necessarily rely on a, a financial planner to take all your savings and hope for the best here. This is uh, about empowering the people. Right. And so uh, you're, you're um, uh, teaching them a bit about Austrian economics. Do you find that's a fairly um, easy process? Do you, is it intuitive for people? Or, yeah. or do you find you have to break down, uh, if you like, the preconceived ideas from uh, Keynes and the neoclassicists? Uh, yeah, I don't think... To really understand uh, Austrian, you, you don't need to really get into the complexity of the financial system. I think it's uh, the easiest to understand, and that's, I think that's what uh, really got me into it, was if you bring interest rates all the way down to zero, you're distorting the market. And this causes severe imbalances, and it also results in such violent booms and busts. Yes, and worse, so, you know, and, and worse than that, it's destroying savings at a rapid absolutely. pace, isn't it? Yeah, sorry, I interrupted. Yeah. No, no, it's, uh, it is destroying savings, and people are forced to invest in the stock market to try and get some returns. And I, I believe that's, part of, uh, that's, that's partly intentional. Um, the governments want to force you into the stock market so we can continue to prop it up. Yes, I have no doubt that uh, there's a vested interest in trying to keep asset prices up generally uh, because of uh, the importance of assets to bank balance sheets. 
Um, David, how do you see the global economic outlook at the moment? And how does, how does this affect your view on asset allocation? Okay, well, um, I do see the volatility continuing to uh, persist for the foreseeable future. I, I don't see an end to this anytime soon. We're going to be trading in a range here for as far as the eye can see. Um, if we do make new highs, I don't think it'll be anything uh, dramatic. We may see uh, lows we haven't seen for a while. But if it gets too low, I do see the Fed stepping in for a third round of quantitative easing. Um, however, uh, oh, that will bring in more inflation, of course, but uh, they'll, they'll say that the inflation isn't there. Um, and also, I do want to make note that for the last, well, over a decade now, the stock market has been pretty much at the same level here. So if you don't even factor in for inflation, you know, we're still uh, 10, 12 years behind. Yes, indeed. Um, I don't know very much about uh, dividend yields and so on in um, Canada where you are, um, but are dividends uh, um, an important part of uh, the investment returns in the Canadian markets or um, like America, have they almost been sort of foregone by investors and companies? Yeah, I, I don't think uh, you're going to get the best uh, dividends or what you would hope for. I mean, uh, I know the big banks do give out a reasonable dividend, but, uh, you know, it's you can get, I think you're forced to sort of uh, hope for capital appreciation. And um, that's not a good sign because uh, dividend... Dividends are very important, and that's part of my uh, whole passive income philosophy from my book, The Money GPS. It's it's uh, about accumulating wealth over time. Yes, I certainly picked that up from your book, that um, uh, you do place a, a very a strong emphasis on cash flow, if you like. From yes. your investments, and um, uh, you know that's that certainly is something you go into uh, in some detail on um, how you recommend you run a, a property portfolio, uh, and also the importance of uh, cash flow in businesses. Um, but coming back a little bit, you said that um, the banks um, in North America pay good dividends. Um, do you feel that the dividends are secure there, or do you think the banks might come under greater pressure um, to retain earnings so that they build their capital bases more effectively? Yeah, that definitely could happen. If we if we see uh, a big crisis coming up, they could uh, stop those dividends at, at any moment. Uh, it's important to look historically, you know, if, if they've been giving a dividend for 20 years, you would hope they would continue it. So it's always a risk. Um but um, yeah, there's not um, there's not too much uh, we can look forward to there because I do see a big crisis uh, happening in the near future. Right. So if I mean, so so in a sense, um, the dividends aren't going to compensate you for the risk of holding bank stock. Have I got this right? Yes, that, that's what I'm trying to get at. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and. Sort of moving on a little bit, how do you see the outlook for gold and silver, and how does that fit in with your investment philosophy? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, gold and silver, I believe, will be the best asset to hold uh, for the foreseeable future. We are heading into a time of big danger, and gold and silver have historically been the safest assets to hold. I like the physical bullion specifically because it is real. If you own a stock, it's I, I consider it a derivative. So it's not truly holding that physical metal. And although you can get big returns on mining stocks, for example, I, I think we need the security and the safety. So at least a large portion of the physical assets should be inside of uh, gold and silver. Right, right. Uh, but the mining stocks, um, uh, it, obviously, they're a very important part of the investment scene in Canada. Um, and uh, I think gold stocks, as James Turk recently pointed out, are at 30-year um, oh, lows relative oh, yes. to, to, to bullion prices. Um, but uh, against that, you do, I suppose, 
in this global mining industry have, um, if you like, political risks. And uh, changing changing um, sectors slightly, uh, I saw that, or we we saw that the Argentinians are nationalising um, a Spanish energy company, uh, and that must surely worry people who are uh, holding interests in gold and silver mines. Uh, in Latin America and elsewhere. Do you think this is a big factor um, in in the market? And do you think that it justifies such a great discount on gold and silver mines? Yeah, I think it could be because, um, you know, like I said before, we're getting at this point where it's it's really uncertain. The future is really uncertain. And the last thing we need is uncertainty in where our investments are going. So, if we are to nationalize more mines, the mining stocks are going to suffer because of that. The, we Investors will have less places to invest. That's why I really put the emphasis on the physical, because you hold it. It's yeah. yours. Yes. I suppose the other thing about mines is that they, they do give you gearing. Uh, but, uh, you know, perhaps if you have a, a reasonable portfolio of mines, then that spreads the risk a bit. Yeah. And, I, and I, of course, I do suggest that never put all of your investments into one thing ever. It, even gold and silver is not bulletproof. Right. No, that's true. Um, would you, uh, in terms of um, thinking of bullion, would you look at bullion substitutes such as ETFs or the Sprott Silver Fund, for example? What's your view on that investment route? I am uh, definitely a physical metals person. I believe you should physically have the metals in your hands. However, as a good secondary, I do believe that the ETFs are uh, reasonable. Um, but again, it's, it's not physical. Like um, my whole philosophy is right now in, in a, at such a dangerous time, we need the gold and silver, um, land, other real assets. Right, right. Uh, changing the tack a little bit, um, we've seen the derivatives markets really grow very, very rapidly in the last 10 years. Um, and particularly uh, over-the-counter derivatives, things things like credit default swaps and and so on. Um, do you have a view on the derivatives markets? Is this something that you watch and worry about? Yes, this is uh, my biggest concern overall. There's no doubt. In my book, I, I quote it here, but it's the um, the Bank of International Settlements. They said that in 2011 there were. 1.5 quadrillion in derivatives. And then I took a look at the World Bank and they said that there is 63 trillion in global GDP. These two numbers here are way off balance. And I see this as the, the biggest threat to uh, the worldwide economy. Yes, it's, um, it's certainly, I mean, the figures are really quite staggering, aren't they? Um, and uh, various people on the internet have produced graphics of piles of hundred dollar bills, and <laughs> yes, I've seen it. Yes, you know, it's sort of stretched from here to the moon or something. Oh my God! Incredible. Yes, would you draw a distinction between uh, the over the counter market, such as I've just described, and uh, derivatives markets, such as well, the regulated derivatives, such as futures, um, you know, the CME and so on. What's your view about them? Is it uh, any different from the unregulated derivatives? Well, the unregulated unregulated uh, derivatives are certainly more dangerous. However, I'm I'm very skeptical of uh, the CME and other uh, markets like that. Um, there's wide speculation that there is uh, uh, manipulation of the price of gold and silver in in the um, futures markets. Uh, and again, that's why I uh, hope that people do get into the physical uh, gold and silver. I believe that when when this disaster uh, occurs, if it occurs, I should say, that those owning the real assets are going to be the ones who ultimately gain the most. Yes. Yeah, so I think really what you're saying is that um, uh, have a reasonable uh, portfolio allocation in physical bullion. Correct. Um, and uh, I mean, that would be certainly preferable, I think, is what you're implying, to speculative positions 
in the futures market. Yes, absolutely. Um, this is these are the games that they're playing. It's become a casino, and uh, that does concern me as well because a lot, a lot of honest people's uh, money is at stake here with. Uh, you know, in the mutual fund industry and uh, people who, who have their money controlled by others. That's part of the reason, you know, why this book is to sort of empower people to learn on their own. And when you go to see a financial advisor, you have some questions to ask them. And you got to make sure that they're uh, being very safe with your money. Yeah. Uh, did um, the MF Global um, uh, debacle create, um, you know, sort of very much... I mean, did it did it produce enormous losses for investors in Canada? Um, I mean, it it, um, it certainly had. I, I found absolutely surprising that uh, a customers' margin money wasn't protected at all. It was all commingled with uh, with um, the balance sheet, so far as we can see. Um, what's the Canadian take on this? Well, I'm not too uh, sure on necessarily on the Canadian side, but uh, I, I know that. At last I read was uh, up to 1.6 billion dollars has been uh, lost in translation. Let's say so that money needs to be found, and, and if not, there are a lot of people who trusted a company and are now out of that money. Uh, Gerald Salente uh, has been one outspoken individual um, who had a segregated account, and uh, apparently they're not giving him his money back. So who knows how many more people out there, uh, honest, good people who just, you know, were investing in futures and uh, had segregated accounts and their money's now gone. What? How many other companies out there are, are doing the same thing? This is a, you know, this is something we're going to find out over the next uh, next little while. Yes, um, I, I, I agree. I think we haven't heard the end of that story yet, and. Um uh, you know, quite frankly, uh, I was absolutely horrified because that sort of thing uh, in this country, people will go to jail. It's actually as simple as yes. that. Um, so, I mean, it really does look like the regulatory scene um, for the regulated futures markets over there have actually failed the investors uh, hugely. Uh, well, David, um, I found this very interesting and, and thank you very much indeed for taking time to speak to us. Um, well, thank, I, you. thank you. Thank you. Can I just remind our, our uh, listeners that uh, your website is themoneygps.com. And I think I'm right in saying you, you, you do have a, um, a pre-seed version of the book for free on, on uh, that site, have you not? That's right. I, I give away a 40-page version of my book. It's a 40 pages uh, condensed down, and that's available for free in PDF form. And if they do want to purchase the book, I, I do have a link on my website, but it is available on Amazon, and uh, they could purchase it there. And uh, I just want to just make note that I use a lot of diagrams and charts to graphically explain to people, so it's not really uh, too complicated for the beginner. Right, so it's it's it's, it's fairly fairly digestible, under, un, unlike so many books we see nowadays. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Great. Well, David, thank you very much indeed, and and uh, I wish you every success with the book. Thank you. I appreciate that. Pleasure. Subscribe to the Gold Money newsletter at www.goldmoney.com to receive email updates on new articles, videos, and iTunes podcasts from our gold research section.